Hello, beautiful hearts, and welcome back. I am Susan. And I'm Carissa, and together we're two open hearts. Today, we would like to help you get yourself and your energy aligned with the winter solstice, because it's a very important day. It is a very important day. Um, We are going to be experiencing the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction and it has not, um, the world's population has not seen this conjunction um, since March 5th of 1226, so approximately 800 years ago. Yes, and it's really special because it means that Jupiter and Saturn from Earth appear like they're in the same location. So while they would normally be two separate stars, we'll see them as one. And um, they are calling that the Christmas star, I believe. Yes, they are calling it the Christmas star. And we should be able to see it starting on the 21st all the way through Christmas. Am I correct? That's what I've heard. Yes. Okay. I wanted to talk just a little bit about what the energy that the planets bring. Um, Saturn represents rules, regulations, government, and the traditional way of doing this. And Jupiter represents blessings, spiritual insights, and new ways of seeing things. So it should be quite interesting. Yes, I would like to add that neither one of us is astrologers, but we do follow some and we've read about it. So that's why we're sharing this today. And from what I've heard from other places, this solstice will be more intense than others we've haven't had in the past because of the Jupiter Saturn conjunction. And um, it will be something that is long lasting. So while there's an actual portal that's opened at the solstice, and that is only open for a few days, the energies that come in there and the energies from Jupiter and Saturn and their conjunction coming in as well, will ripple out for the next several months. So we should look forward to change, maybe some beautiful new change amongst rigid things that we've had when you combine those two planets. Um, I also would like to add, because I heard this from someone else and thought it was really important that you may not feel anything on, on the solstice, on the 21st, you may feel the energy. You may be vibrating in your bed. You may be not able to sleep. You may sleep extra hard, or you may not feel anything at all. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. No matter how you live through this portal is just for you. And it means um, there's nothing wrong. There's no, you're not off track. The fact that you're here means you're on track. You're already on track. And if you follow along with the rest of our video, we help you get into an energetic place to just be in this energy, no matter how you feel it or sense it. And another thing to note about the winter solstice is that it is the longest night of the year and the shortest day, at least here in the Northern hemisphere. In the Southern hemisphere, it will be opposite and it will actually be their summer solstice that's occurring. But here in the Northern hemisphere where we are, it represents the last of the longest nights. And from then on, it's a new cycle and new beginnings as each day we get more light and more light coming back in. Yes. I just wanted to add that we'd like you to have joyful new beginnings with the the new year. So before we begin getting into alignment, I would like to set space for Susan and I and for everybody else who is going to join this video at any point in time. So just join us. If anything we say um, you're not comfortable with or you don't agree with, just ignore that part and don't state it in your own mind and replace it with something that feels more in alignment with your own method of setting space. So I like to begin by calling in all of our guides and teams of the highest vibration of unconditional love to assist us today 
to hold space for this sacred work that we're doing to help us and just support us in general. After that, I often will call in um, assistance from the directions. It's something that Susan and I have been doing pretty much since we began learning. It was taught to us right off the bat. So it's been something important. So in whatever manner you normally might set protections on the walls, some of you might use Reiki or circle drawing, whatever method you like. I am lazy. And so rather than get up and do all of the physical movements, which I know sometimes can make it more empowerful, I like to just do everything from my mind and, you know, I'm here. My body's anchoring what my mind is thinking. So I like to just think, I call forth our team and friends and beings of the highest vibration of love from the East. And I see that coming in and I call forth our team and love and beings in protection from the South. I call forth unconditional love, our team and beings and protection from the West. I call forth unconditional love, our beings, our friends, our team and protection from the North. And before I move to the next step, I like to just send my personal love in gratitude to all those directions as well. So I send now to the East and the South in the West and the North. And I actually do a full circle. So I just like burst love, just send gratitude out. And now I call forth support and help from our beings and friends and team from Father Sky. And, you know, just love from Father Sky and protection. Love for the moon and the sun and all the stars and all the help from the universe. And I call that in. And I send my love back up. And now I call in love and help and protection from Mother Earth. I welcome her in. (sighs) And I send my love back down to her. And now I hold love for the center of all things where the center of our hearts meet with everything else. And I honor that sacred space. So I ask that from all these directions, from all directions, we are protected while we do this work. We are kept safe and we are filled with unconditional love. And that was kind of an abridged, an abridged method, right? Like you can do that as long as you need to. You can really stand at each moment at each direction, like stand for a minute or honor, offer gifts, whatever is something you feel called to do. So take that and you can use it in the future for other things. But if you don't have time, or even if you do, and you just feel like relaxing, you can just call them in gently like that. That was beautifully done. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like they're laughing about how quickly it's done. And I'm like, yes, but speed is of the essence for our video today. (laughs) Good friends. Yes. (laughs) That's why if you want to take more time, you know, it's always an option. Do whatever feels right. But it's very powerful to call on all of the directions and Mother Earth and Father Sky. It's a very powerful protection and it serves us well. Yes, it does serve us well. I would like to add one extra thing, which is I ask that the lines and communication be protected from our video throughout all of the internet, throughout all wavelengths and radio waves and however it is transferred to each device today. Please allow that to be protected and kept safe as well. (sighs) Nice. So I have my list here to see what we're doing next. And now we are going to do um, a very, not too quickly, not too rushed, but we're going to ground. So we're just going to connect into our mother earth energy, just kind of sit in a grounded space before we begin. So I'm just going to close my eyes and again, guide everyone through that. So I want everyone to envision at the very top of their head, 
is a purple lotus flower. And they see the beautiful color of this flower. They see all the petals and they see the flower opening. Like if it was already open, that's beautiful, but see it opening ever so much more. Just all the petals really opening wide, all of them stretching out. And as you see the lotus do this, you almost see it begin to glow with a purple light. Hmm. And we're going to have, we're going to envision now some of this purple light that we see with our outstretched flower come through the center of our bodies and move downwards. And as it reaches where our third eye is, we have that purple light combined with some indigo light, which is a purplish blue. And we bring those together downwards towards our throat, where they combine with the true blue of our throat chakra. And I just want to add that if you see other colors as you do this, that is okay, because as we evolve and as we grow and we work on our ascension path, sometimes this shifts. So just collect the colors that are there and collect the energy. And now from our throat, send this down farther, send it towards your heart space and collect the energy there. It may appear as a green or pink or other and then collect all those beautiful colors together that you have so far and send them into your lower parts of your body. Collect them from your solar plexus, which is at the bottom of your rib cage. Collect the beautiful goldens and yellows and sun colors there. Move downwards towards your navel, your belly button. Collect whatever colors are there. They may be oranges. Continue on down to the very root of your tailbone. This is your base chakra. Collect all the deep reds that sometimes are found there. And now you have an entire rainbow of colors. And what you want to do is send this rainbow down each leg, allowing it to move through your thighs and your knees and past your ankles and out the bottom of your feet. And for me, once I see this rainbow, once they the rainbows come out of the bottom of my feet, they recombine to one large rainbow and they move down through the layers of Mother Earth. So feel the dirt, feel the sand, feel this rainbow as it moves down through the different layers, getting towards the crusts, maybe some magma, until this rainbow reaches the very, very center of Mother Earth. Now in the very center, there is a beautiful crystal and this is Mother Earth's crystalline heart. And this is where we are going to wrap our rainbow around like a big hug and just attach to that beautiful crystal. You'll feel it once it's on because you'll begin to feel her energy swirling up around your rainbow, coming back up through all the layers of Earth, all of the crusts, all of the sand, until Mother Earth's energy begins to enter through your feet and it moves up through your body, past your knees, your thighs, up to your hips, up all the way through the middle of your body where your spine is, all the way into your skull and out the top of your head. And Mother Earth's energy continues out the top like a fountain and it is combined with your energy. So it's, be it's like a beautiful rainbow translucent fountain that begins to fill up your aura and all of the space around you. <sighs> and for this, sometimes that is enough to be a beautiful grounding ceremony to call forth Mother Earth's energy. But for today, I would like to also now call forth the energy of Father Sky. So envision a white light or a beam of sun, like a ray of sunshine coming down from the heavens and touching your crown chakra. And you can feel the warmth of this ray. And as it comes in, it comes down past your throat, past your third eye, 
and it mixes with the energy in your heart. And then this sunshine ray energy of the universe also begins to erupt from your crown as a fountain. So all together, you have the rainbow and the transparent energy and the sun, sunlight ray mixing and filling up your space so that you are one and you are whole and you are everything you need to be. All right. I hope that felt good for everyone. I feel nice and balanced. Yes, that was very nice. Very nice. Thank you. And now, you know, it's always good to get, you know, in a sacred space. That's what we did. We set our space to begin with and we have connected into our energies and we've connected into mother earth and father sky. And now we are going to connect to the energy of I am. And so I know that Susan does an I am breath and I would like her to lead us in that. Um, yes, I found it to be um, very calming, very grounding. As we inhale, we inhale I, I, and as we exhale, we exhale M, M. So I am. We'll do that two more times. I am, I am. I find it to be very, very calming to do that, um, to do the I am. So I would like to continue with I am, and please repeat after me, perfect alignment. I am perfect alignment. I am perfect sovereignty. I am perfect sovereignty. I am perfect co-creation. I am perfect co-creation. I am oneness. I am oneness. That was very beautiful. Thank you. It's very centering. Um, it also is grounding and just brings us back to center. Yes, helps us connect with the center of our hearts more in the divine truth of all that we already are. Things that we don't have to strive to be. We just have to strive to not let our life here as human beings make us forget what we already are. We don't have to strive to be those things. We already are them. Yes. So these are other tools that you can use at other times. This I am breath to find your center, especially to get you through a tough time. I know it really helps if you're in a stressful zone to do that breathing for just a few minutes. Yes, it doesn't take very long. And especially in a stressful environment, um, just breathing and, and um, repeating the I am just to yourself even. You don't have to say it out loud. It really does help bring you back to center so that you can remain calm and move forward through whatever you're going through. Mm -hmm. And now we wanted to move into this, this whole video is about moving into alignment with how we want to feel and what we want to anchor in on the solstice, December 21st. So we're grounded, we've connected to our I am energy, and now we would like to start to feel gratitude because everybody has something to be grateful for. 
And when we focus on what we're already grateful for in our life, it's easier to get into a place of peace and calm. And then we can bring in the things we look forward to and want to see in our life from that energy point. It's a beautiful way to incorporate them. So there, there's not a sense of lack or not enough because we're already focused on what we have and what we're so happy about. Yes. Gratitude puts us in, in the right frame of mind to bring very good things to us, to continue to bring more things to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And it just feels nice to get out of our heads because in, in human, in humanity, you know, we focus sometimes on stress and the things we've got to do and the things we don't have yet. And we don't always focus on the simple gifts that we have every single day. So we're going to repeat some things that we're grateful for. And some of you may have these things and some of you may not. And so do your best to fill in if there's something that we've said that you don't feel grateful for with something you do feel grateful for. And just, you can even keep going and pause the video once we've started to keep adding your own things till you really feel gratitude. And then we'll move to the next step. Yes. It's good to get into an attitude of gratitude. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm, so I would like to start with things like, I am grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to see, to see, and I see colors and I see beautiful things. And to have this gift of sight, to be able to see through my world, I am very grateful for. And I am very grateful to have the, to be blessed with movement for my body. I'm grateful for my body and my ability to move my arms, my legs, to walk, to run, to stand. To dance. <laughs> to dance. Yes, actually, that's one of the most beautiful things that I'm grateful for is the mm -hmm. ability to dance. And I am grateful to have pets in my life and companions. So human companions and animal companions, just beings around that support me and are with me. I'm very thankful for that. And I am grateful for all of the trees and um, I'm grateful for living close to the mountains where I can go at any time and um, the trees are plentiful, the bushes are plentiful, the rocks are plentiful, and the rivers, they're such a blessing to be able to see them, to hear them, to feel them. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm thankful for being a spiritual person and being aware that I have an endless amount of spirit guide teams as well. And that I am never alone, even if I'm alone. I'm thankful to be aware that there are beings and teams and energy in general. I mean, source, universe, supporting me at any given time, all day long. And I am grateful for all of the beautiful people that I have met through our spiritual work that we've done. Um, people that I call friends. I'm grateful for all of the opportunities to meet these people. Mm -hmm. And I am also grateful, as you were saying, pretty much to connect with Mother Earth and to feel her dirt and her sand and her waters and to be able to connect with nature and be here amongst nature and still get to see nature. And I am grateful for all of the love that I have from my family, my pets. I'm grateful for the love. And since it's winter time, I'm extra grateful to have a warm shelter, a beautiful place to spend my time that is warm and separate from the outside temperatures. Good thing to be grateful for. <laughs> and that applies as well in the summer, right? Like if the outside temperatures in the summer are too scalding hot, I'm still thankful for a place of shelter, for a reprieve from 
the outside temperatures. Yes. I am grateful for such a beautiful world that we live in, in so many beautiful places to see, to visit, even just to be able to see pictures of different countries and different beautiful places. It's, it feels really good to know that we live in such a beautiful world and I'm grateful for that. Yes. So there is so much to be grateful for just by being here, no matter what other things are going on. There's just wonderful little moments of joy and those moments should be honored and should be focused on as much as possible because the moments of joy we have and the moments of gratitude are what gets us through the hardships. So the more we bring those to our attention, the better off we will be. I think that we feel better when we start our day out being grateful for what we have, for who we are. Our days go better. We attract throughout the day more and more things to be grateful for. It truly is a blessing what it brings. Mm -hmm. So now that we are really feeling this energy of gratitude, I want to take it to um, just a moment. I want everyone to focus on their heart space. And I want you to feel that gratitude as a tangible feeling. How does your heart feel when you are so thankful for the things that you have around you or the things you're able to do? The heart feels to me like it's like sending out energy or growing bigger. So focusing in on that feeling, we want to move into our last portion of this video, which is stepping into alignment for the things we want to see for ourselves, for humanity, for mother nature and the whole world as we step into this next phase and into this next year. So for myself and for everyone who joins us, I would like to see health, an abundance of health, an abundance of ease and grace in your life, but health in all areas. I would like to see peace and love and hope. Yes, continue to see people coming together because they are people and because they have more things in common than they have not in common. Even if what they have not in common seems big and powerful and important to them, it's okay to have important things that you don't have in common with other people, especially when you come together over the other things you have in common. We're, we're humans. We're all here living human lives, trying to be with our families and take care of our loved ones. And that's something we have in common. So to focus more on joining in those common ways as we yes. come into this next phase. Yes, and joining with kindness and compassion for each other. Because as you said, we don't always all agree on, on everything. We have differences. But I think if we can extend kindness and compassion and understanding and acceptance of each other, there would be such a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, that would be a beautiful thing. I would also like to see as we move into this next phase of our, our lives to envision humanity taking more care of our mother earth and all of the animals and plants on it. So just envision everyone just gently and easily being aware of ways that they could make things easier for the planet. Not anything that's hard, not having to give up things or strive or, you know, just with ease and grace going, huh, I could take care of this thing with ease and I could make a difference. And if everybody came to these gentle epiphanies and made little adjustments, think of how happy our planet would be. 
Yes, I think that it would be beautiful going forward if when people could get up in the morning and visit gratitude and experience joy at a joy with their lives, with themselves right now in that moment and for joy to just be such an expression of, of the human race. Yes, that people would allow themselves to be in joy more than they worry about how they will be perceived so that people will sing when they want to sing and move when they want to move and smile and laugh when they want to laugh and release any worries and fears of how others will have their thoughts about you. Just know in your heart that <clears throat> others will be compassionate and you will find those who hold compassion and kindness for exactly who you are. So you may be who you are and you may let your freak flag fly, as I like to say, <laughs> just be a weirdo because if that's who you are, that's who you are. And many of us just are. Yes, many of us just are what would be considered to be just a little bit crazy. <laughs> but that's but the crazy thing. Good. If you if you looked at it and you realized everyone's crazy, then it's not even weird or different to be that. It's just that a lot of people are not allowing themselves to be who they are because of worrying about how they'll be perceived. So if everyone was crazy, no one would be crazy. That's it. That's true. That would be truly beautiful. Truly beautiful. I want to leave a minute so that everyone listening or watching can think of ways they would like to see the world grow and change in beauty and put your focus and energy there because together we can do amazing things and we can create the world we want to see. And I would also like to have us all together, no matter when you're watching this, by the way, if you watch it much later than the solstice, it does not matter. To do this practice is to create joy in the world and to bring into alignment with your fellow humans to make something beautiful, co-creation. So I would like whenever you come upon this, if everyone could call forth the highest, it's essentially the energy of the highest and bestest good for humanity, for Mother Earth, and for yourself. I call forth the highest and bestest good under the law of grace for myself, for humanity, and for the entire world. Very when nice. we each do that, we make big ripples, not even little ripples, big ripples. Yes. So I hope that you found all of these tools helpful and that you use them in other times and other places as well to come into alignment and co-creation for your future. Yes, we hope that you find them valuable and we hope that you're able to incorporate them into your daily lives. Yes. If you have liked this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe. And we wish you a beautiful and amazing winter solstice and beyond. <laughs>